business objective, um, let me just cover what we do. So at Adludio, Adludio is uh, an advertisement company uh, that operates at the core of advertising campaigns. Um, like our expertise spans the entire campaign process, whether it's uh, designing impactful ads uh, uh, and launching them. And uh, we manage campaigns across uh, diverse platforms as well. And we deliver real-time performance insights as well. And uh, we ensure a comprehensive and uh, seamless uh, experience across all these boards uh, for our clients. Um, so in regards to our service, as you have heard, it's a, a holistic approach. Uh, we first deep dive into understanding our uh, clients' aspirations. Then we transform them into uh, a captivating and engaging advertisements. And then even after like uh, uh, creating those advertisements, we already uh, we also like uh, strategically place and uh, aim for achieving optimal visibility as well um, so by leveraging advanced technologies we make sure uh, that our clients had reached their target audience uh, efficiently so um like uh, we like adrudio has been uh, through a transition since last year and um, currently we are in the midst of a significant transformation. Uh, we are evolving from a traditional advertising company into a technological innovator. Our aim is um, to revolutionize, uh, re revolutionize the advertising, advertising landscape by which we enable advertisers to initiate and execute their campaigns with A's, cause effectiveness, and uh, yeah, basically excellence. Uh, so this vision is about automation as its core and uh, setting uh, a new standard for the advertisement company. So um, in regards to our collaboration with Ten Academy, uh, we are in search of exceptional uh, talent to join us on this journey. Basically, we are looking for individuals who are ready to innovate and refine what's possible in advertising. Uh, and um, if you are passionate about uh, merging creativity with technology and um, like eager to make a significant impact in the advertisement world, uh, this will be a perfect place for you. So if you uh, can go up, uh, uh, like scroll down a bit. Yeah. Scroll more down, down. So yeah, here yeah, background and uh, context. So we have provided you here some blocks to start off with and we have placed uh, a, a definition for you. So what means uh, like uh, a creative, a concept, ad frame, and ad format as well. Um, I think it's uh, more or less more descriptive and you can check out the documents, but just to give you uh, a highlight of the challenge, uh, like we're currently through uh, like advancement in the AI, if you've been uh, following the news, there are diffusion models, LLMs and uh, uh, the rise of LLMs is changing and transforming uh, the entire industry and uh, also including advertisement. So Adrudio is being uh, uh, like uh, driven by this as well. And uh, there, are, there is a need to streamline um, uh, the different processes and uh, enhance creativity so Adludio is uh, embracing this change head on uh, and uh, with a challenge designed to revolutionize how we conceive and uh, deploy advertising campaigns. Um, if you kind of go down a bit again. So here, like, um, 
just to show you what our creative mean, uh, if you can select one of like the links down below, Indica ITC, yeah. Can you show us? Okay, I think like I need to share the whole window. Oh, okay. So this is uh, a typical creative that we design. So if you click one of the shades and drag it on on the lady, there is a, yeah the creative or advertisement plays out and you see the creative. So basically, the, this is what we do. So just to give you uh, the business objective and um, industry context, uh, imagine a scenario where Adludio receives a new client and uh, this new client approaches us for an advertising campaign. Uh, traditionally, uh, what we do is we kickstart uh, a lengthy process of discussions. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Okay, okay, no worries. So traditionally, what we do is we uh, kickstart a lengthy process we, uh, of discussions, brainstorming, and back forth communication um, uh, between the client and uh, our designers and so on. This lengthy process is, consumes uh, significant time and resources. Uh, sometimes, even without fruition, it won't be changed, or we won't be working on that project. So our challenge is basically uh, it seeks to automate this initial phase. We want to create a system where clients can input their campaign details and like magic uh, be presented with uh, a creative, like uh, a creative uh, which, can, which they can choose and uh, want to be implemented basically. So if we implement this, um, it, it does not only decrease the time and cost, but also like it amplifies the business efficiency and the campaign effectiveness. And uh, in doing so, set a new standard in the industry as well. So um, in doing so, like in, in order to tackle this, um, we intend to use uh, the latest AI advancements like LLMs and the diffusion models where we use the deep knowledge tools and adaptability uh, that the LLMs offer us to craft new campaigns, the new campaign ideas uh, that will resonate with the client's brand and current market dynamics. I know like the the like I have created another slide for me where I'm reading from, but uh, the challenge, the document doesn't have this. So maybe uh, uh, once I get to the data part, we'll come to this part. So no worries, guys. Don't try to look through the challenge document. <laughs> Is that clear? Okay, great. Um, so, continuing from the LLM part, uh, one of the other uh, advancements is diffusion models, as you know, and um, we, like uh, many companies before uh, 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 being capable of generating uh, uh, image and different assets, they were kind of uh, certain, like the, the way we approach getting assets is by basically by searching and we we want to uh, change that so these diffusion models they kind of open the door to like generate uh, unique captivating assets by just providing them prompts and uh, they are swift and they also like 
enhance uh, our creative capabilities. So that's what we uh, intend to use. So they, this, this even using these two tools, they are uh, big game changers. They will enable uh, us to like deliver personalized and impactful advertisement solutions uh, efficiently and uh, rapidly. And um, yeah, so as a whole, what's our ultimate aim? Um, one part of uh, one part of this is like as I discussed earlier, it's like AdWords through uh, going through transformation, and this transformation is basically automating the entire process. So one part of this automation uh, uh, in advertisement is creating this. Uh, uh, advertisements or as you have seen it earlier what we call creatives and uh, we want to distill like this entire process into an automated system which is uh, capable of generating visual storyboards based on a, a client provided information and um, uh, these storyboards will not just uh, depict the creative concept and uh, but will illustrate the entire user flow. I, I, I will show you what uh, uh, a storyboard basically means. So think of this challenge uh, uh, more of uh, an exercise in efficiency, like uh, uh, it's, it's a step towards redefining the landscape of digital advertising. And uh, by harnessing the power of AI and automation, uh, we want to be pioneers uh, uh, finding uh, like new solutions uh, to change what it means uh, for creating advertisement and how they are executed through the time. Uh, so if I give you this broad information, I think we can go through the, the challenge works, works through and I can uh, discuss about the data and follow through the uh, like the challenge document here. As you can see here, uh, we have provided you with three data here. The first one will be an archive folder. This uh, archive folder contains uh, like a lot of folders. Within each folder, there are two, uh, like uh, they're all image and assets. And all this, um, uh, within this asset, there are two major uh, assets that you should remember. Uh, they are called landing and uh, end frame. Mm -hmm. So basically, what it means is the landing is the the first frame. Or if you uh, if you remember earlier, when we opened the creative, there was a girl, and there were some uh, sh uh, like packets uh, uh, showing up, and that particular image, the entire uh, creative image, is called. Uh, a landing page and similar to that when the creative when you play through the creative and uh, it ends that entire image is called an end frame so within each folder we will provide you this landing and end frame image and all the uh, assets that are used to build this uh, these frames the landing and the end frame so uh, like uh, uh, maybe I'll tell you later, but you can use this uh, in the future when you uh, handle the second task, which is image composition. We'll come to it later on. So you can access the zip folders using the link. And the next uh, data that we provide to you are sample concepts. So we have already kind of implemented this uh, and we have this capability at the moment. Uh, basically concepts being textual representation of ideas. So we will provide you a JSON file, which is a list of concepts. Each concept will have uh, keys, basically describing uh, what the concept is, it's ex give you its explanation, the title of that concept, and uh, assets suggestions. Like for each concept, we provide three uh, three asset uh, suggestions, whereby like um, 
a creative is basically composed of uh, 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 like made from frames. So earlier, if you remember, the lady first facing us is the first frame. And when a person engages with that frame, another frame loads and so on. So uh, a single creative will be built from multiple frames, say four or five, and there will be transitions between these frames. And um, so these concepts will, uh, uh, will be based on a frame by frame basis. And uh, within, the con within each concept, there is a, a key called implementation and that uh, uh, within that implementation implementation the values are based on like a, a frame by frame analysis of how each frame should look like and similarly the uh, asset suggestions will be provided uh, on a frame by frame basis and uh, uh, regarding like category description here uh, if you go a bit above um, yeah, uh, when we provide you these asset suggestions, we have a list of identified uh, types of assets. So you can access them here. So say, for example, uh, if one of the asset suggestions is the background, basically what, uh, uh, what will be available in that uh, frame will be like the values will be uh, a background then the description of what the background should look like. Then if it's a product product, then what the description of that uh, product should look like. So that covers the sample concepts part. Um, so to go through the next one, it's a storyboard example. Um, I don't think they've shared it to you there, but maybe I'll open and share my screen to you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, can I share once? Okay. Maybe sorry, Milky, to interrupt. Uh, if the data is the one which is shared by other, I think I have appreciated it. Oh. They have access. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, great. So just for a presentation, uh, from a presentation perspective, this is what um, uh, a storyboard board looks like at the moment. So basically, as I uh, uh, discussed it earlier, once uh, there is uh, like uh, uh, the client and uh, our designers uh, go back and uh, discuss and ideas and come up with an idea, they provide that idea through this storyboard uh, format or visualization. So basically this is for a Coca-Cola advertisement that was uh, intended for a Christmas period. And as, as you can see here, uh, it's in Spanish, but uh, I don't know what it says. <laughs> there is uh, uh, like, it shows how the creative goes from one frame to another and where the engagement is precisely uh, available. And uh, it also includes the size and the transitions across the frames. So this basically gives you the idea how the creative pans out where once it's built, but as you can see, it's kind of limited. Uh, it's just uh, horizontally laid out. And if we introduce a multiple creative which we'll, we'll, we will do surely, uh, there is no way of un, uh, like representing it uh, at the moment right now. So yeah, uh, I can stop sharing now. Can you please share the challenge again, challenge document? So yeah, that's that covers all the data part. And this is just uh, the part with the black background is a part of uh, part describing how the uh, the archive folder is uh, kind of structured. So let's go to the next part. Mm. 
go back down to the breakdown, task breakdown. Okay. Uh, so basically uh, our task, uh, it has been added for you, but our task basically uh, starts from the second one, what we have uh, provided you. I think the idea and the workflow strategy is basically a stepping stone and like what you have to follow every time. But the real challenge starts from the second task. So it's about image and text generation. So as we have said earlier, it's basically converting um, textual inputs into uh, a final and representative storyboard, right? So what you have to do first is if you uh, like you receive a textual description of what the idea what the idea of the creative is and what assets should be used in each frame so if you like you can select from the three asset suggestions one one of them and for each frame you should be able to uh, convert these textual descriptions into assets basically uh, binary data like like uh, image videos or text but for the moment like we only want image and text so what you have to do is like uh, uh, get get the description read it and there are two two tasks here one is for the image uh, generation you can uh, explore and implement methods for generating image like that align with the given description as i said like there are some considerations that you have taken take into uh, consideration. Basically, these assets will be used to build a creative. So um, let's say like, just to give an example, there are two, two major types of uh, advertisement uh, uh, formats or what we call them ad formats, which are MPU and FS. If you saw them earlier, there is a description basically these uh, ad formats are pixel uh, uh, pixel sizes which is for fs i think it's 300 by 250 so it's uh, a, a, a two by three uh, format i think uh, or aspect ratio so when you create this um, image you have to consider the aspect ratio so basically later on when you try to compose and create a single frame uh, representing that uh, uh, that frame uh, this aspect ratio will be really a challenge and if you don't consider it during creation when you resize that image it will uh, make it harder for you guys so that's one of the things to consider and like you can consider other properties if you think they are uh, important, especially if they affect the visual appeal and uh, relevance of the image. And optionally, like you can investigate techniques for uh, techniques for refining the image prompts. Basically, these, these textual descriptions can be used as prompts. And uh, like based on the, the models that use, like potentially you'd be using uh, stable, uh, like uh, diffusion models and different diffusion models have different ways of prompting them and uh, if you like find a way to improve these prompts uh, to generate a, a better a better image with better quality and specificity that would be really great mm, and going to the text generation part uh, so basically you like even if we uh, even if uh, an element is a text we're just providing you what the text should say in a textual way so you you need to find a way to change that uh, provided uh, uh, text into an image so you're uh, like uh, you, it's uh, it's easier than the image generation, but you have to find a way, and also you have to consider the width and height, not like uh, 
to fill or surpass the allotted, uh, allotted size of the ad format as well. So as an optional uh, task, uh, like we want to be providing you the font, the size and so on, but you can delve into the details of uh, the font and other visual properties uh, to make it uh, like enhance its readability and aesthetics alignment as well. So the ultimate, uh, the, the ultimate goal of this first task, it's basically foundational. If you don't have this asset, you can't build a frame. And if you don't have a frame, ultimately you don't have uh, a storyboard. So this is very uh, the very foundational step for the entire task. And uh, we have provided you with, with resources here. Uh, go back a little. So like, uh, we have provided you with open source uh, models and ways to like that describe how to use them with an API and also uh, like uh, introductions and uh, general overview of what diffusion models are and how to use them. So on to the next task, please. So the next part is about image composition. So it's... Uh, this will be like the heart, uh, the heart of our challenge. Basically, generating images won't be that harder. Uh, like making them re realistic, uh, more realistic, and so on will be a, a challenge. But it's not the ultimate challenge. The big challenge is on this third task. A task basically, once you identify this and um, or produce these assets, you have to like construct a single frame. Uh, whereby you place all these generated assets uh, in a particular lo location where it makes sense and uh, like uh, uh, like um, supports the narrative of the uh, provided concept. And uh, so this part is very critical uh, and it consists of two parts. Basically, like I said, you identify the location and size uh, when generating the image sometimes the size might be bigger for you so you might have to like recite that image uh, what we like what i recommend is basically if you if you like uh, uh, re resize the image based on aspect ratio not to change the aspect ratio uh, if you change the aspect ratio you'll be getting into a lot uh, a lot more complex uh, uh, issues and so on. So basically, you have to identify wh where the location is that you have to put that particular asset and what size that asset should be should use. And uh, as an optional task, you can consider additional factors. We are only uh, asking for at the moment like the location and size, but there are different uh, aspects to this as well. You, uh, there might be orientation and other like uh, uh, such factors that might impact uh, the perception of that and so on. So this is the ultimate task and uh, uh, figuring out how to build a frame is uh, the big the big part of this task. And um, so successfully completing this task. Uh, involves uh, demonstrating a thoughtful approach to composing art frames, as I said. And for inspiration and guidelines, we have uh, given you uh, some uh, resources uh, regarding how to lay out ads. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, there is also a big resource, uh, a list of uh, curated uh, image composition models and their research research paper there and i uh, i hope uh, you'll get uh, like a lot of information from there and uh, once you once you're done with that it's almost like uh, the 80 percent of the task is done and uh, you'll go into the task the last task which is uh, building the storyboard so if you have these frames like i said earlier and showed you what a, what a storyboard looks like you have to like place this like you have to create a visualization for this uh, uh, using these frames. 
basically create uh, create like a user flow diagram using these frames. So what you do is uh, you just present the user flow, you arrange the generated frames in a in a sequence that like uh, effectively conveys the progression of the ads narrative. Um, and optionally, what you can do is, like I said earlier, we might have, and surely we'll do, multi-pass concepts, which basically uh, a, a user can go uh, in a non-linear format. So for ads with uh, like multiple or branching narratives, um, you have to like have a way or a strategy to represent this in a visualization format. Mm, and even like as I said earlier, the storyboard that we are currently providing are limited into what uh, what we are visualizing and are less interpretable. So finding out the best uh, alternative mechanisms would be ideal for us. So I think that covers about the entire task uh, subdivisions. The major ones and we have already like plotted uh, like a diagram uh, uh, um, uh, a pipeline by which you can follow where textual inputs enter uh, at the first stage then progress through each part of the uh, uh, like uh, uh, processing nodes say and finally produce uh, uh, a storyboard which will be sent to the client so um uh, uh, as a whole uh, this is the uh, the task at hand and uh, uh, as a uh, like this task like you are undergoing is not just uh, about solving a challenge like it's about setting new benchmarks um, for what's possible in digital advertising and uh, like we're, we're, we're excited to see how you uh, leverage the provided data sets and uh, your creativity to redefine the future of uh, ad campaigns. So yeah, I think that's uh, all I have for you uh, regarding the challenge. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please throw them away, uh, throw, throw them to me, yeah. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Hi, Mikas. Good afternoon. Uh, Good afternoon. Can you just repeat the, the text generation part? Uh, I kind of understand the image uh, generation, but I didn't catch the whole picture on the text generation. Thank you. Yes, that one. Hmm. Uh, regarding text generation, um, it's just about like uh, finding a way uh, of representing a uh, like converting a text uh, a text into an image. So what you can do is, if you know about Pillow, basically, uh, you can use that uh, uh, module to construct uh, a textual image. So if you say, for example, I'm, uh, I want to convert a text which says, uh, click here, uh, click here to go to the, um, maybe like uh, just a uh, shop now, let's say you want to uh, cre create uh, a text which says shop now. So if you want to create that, you just basically have to write shop now using pillow on an image and if you export it as a PNG, you just have a, a textual image. So that's it. But that approach, so it's, it's, yeah. that approach. Yeah. it's it's a, a text on the image or a, a, a frame. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. But find an, uh, an optimum uh, an optimum way of doing that.
Uh, anyone else? Or is it clear? Or uh, it's not clear? Go ahead, Nia. Hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So I, I have a question on the outcome of the algorithm or the program we're going to write. So after like we intake the assets and the description about the ad that we're going to create is the outcome is going to be uh you know a url or an output of a tmg and its description and uh you know its position on the screen like what is the outcome after we do all this so um like if you remember the diagram down below if you can uh, scroll down please yeah if you can see it here so like textual concepts basically uh, are the inputs for this um, basically framework or uh, proposed pipeline uh, basically text goes in and finally the storyboard is basically an image uh, whatever format it is png J jpg uh, and so on so like at each stage there are different outputs. Say, for example, to start from the first one, which is the uh, acid generator. So for the acid generator, all the outputs there will be assets, image, uh, image, like assets are image. So all the outputs that you get for that process will be image. And for the next one, the image composition part, like you are trying to associate or identify the um, uh, for each asset, you want to identify the location where to put that image and uh, the size of that uh, image in that particular area where you put it. Say, for example, if you have a background and if your top left uh, location, uh, uh, you consider it zero, zero and the top left uh, location, I mean. So if, if you want like if you want to put it in that top right area and want it to fill the entire uh, entire uh, advertisement uh, area so you put it at that location zero zero where it's top and left positions are zero zero and its actual size its width and height are equal to the ad that you're designing and for the last part where like uh, uh, for the storyboard generator, uh, you are just basically doing like uh, you are constructing each frame. Like you have now, you have assets, their location. So basically, what you do, you construct each frame by positioning uh, based on the output of the previous one. And if you construct your frames, then if you position them based on the user flow, you get a storyboard so that uh, final uh, storyboard will be an image of describing the user flow and uh, the frames generated uh, is that clear okay yeah so okay. to summarize so the first one is image generation and the second one is where to place those images in their respective frame and the second the third one is uh, you know, composing the frames so that they make sense, in a way. So that frame one goes with this one, frame two goes this one, and so on. Uh, I've had the first and the second steps in the correct, but I didn't clearly hear you on the third one. So the, the third one is composing the frames. Like, I'm deciding which comes first and which comes last, and you know, so on, but, you know, composing the steps. Right? Uh, rather than composing, it's just uh, aligning or arranging the frames. No, no. Okay. So that's it. Am I missing something? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Am I missing something? Or no, no. Is that it? No, you're correct. Yeah, that's it. Okay. 
Thank you. So, so Milky, maybe, maybe thanks again for being willing to give this tutorial and maybe just to confirm. So if we go to the very first, the data part, like just on, I don't know who's scrolling. Um, so in, no, the data, the data just maybe. Uh, so how much, okay, so here in the JSON, so the number two, there is the JSON component. So this is basically an example uh, description that basically partly is, uh, it's not yet a story in a sense, it doesn't have positions. If we, um, if we, how much, so there is a part, let's, let's break it into two pieces, the whole project. One is up to generating that JSON. The second one is from that JSON to the storyboard. Where do you think is the hardest uh, or, you know, the most work there? Uh, so basically, as you said, the first part is done, like uh, Adludi has done that part. And we are looking for a way to now change these textual um, concepts into actual, uh, like, image depictions or uh, provide uh, clients uh, a way to see them. Textuals, uh, textual representation is not good enough, so clients need visual description. So we want to change this textual uh, way of providing our concepts into a visual one. So that's the task at hand. And uh, for the like this, the second data, the sample concepts, you don't have to generate them. We have provided like 115 samples of what a concept looks like. And the category description part down below on the uh, E part is just uh, like we have categorized types of assets. So when you see asset suggestions inside for each frame, we say like background, then the description, product, then the description, text, then the description. So basically this background, text, and um, like visual components are categorized and uh, like we're providing you this information, what to expect and what you might uh, come uh, like see or come upon when checking the concepts uh, is that clear yeah no that that's very clear and okay. so uh, am i then is it so maybe that i uh, i was explaining slightly different so do you expect them to actually then start working with this from the ones the sample concept started and not not try to generate those in a state focus on the second component from you know translating those concepts and whatever is the frames whatever suggested to actual visual elements yeah exactly yeah and uh, this is the biggest task uh, the other part uh, the previous one it's uh, um, more or less easier but this one changing in them into a visual one is the hardest so yeah you don't want you to generate okay. concepts. Is, are there variations? Because I, when I was looking at the JSON document, I was seeing the same descriptions, and then only sometimes the interactive has been changing. I think we can't see your screen uh, because I think it's only shared. Uh, whoever is sharing, it's only shared this. Yeah. So when you now look at, for example, there's the the first component of within the JSON, the first component. I imagine that the concept implementation then explanation then you go down if you go down you get another explanation and then another frame uh, part am i assuming because when i look at them it looks like they are variations of the same thing are they the because they have the same thing it's frame by frame background interactive element in one it says uh, it is a button and the other one it says um, you know, like for example, in the other one, it says tap to animate, uh, things like that. Are they, mm -hmm. what are they? Maybe just, is, am I, did I misunderstood the data? Uh, mm, uh, maybe let me share and give you a detail uh, of a yeah. single concept. That's much better, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. 
And you see my screen? It is coming now, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So just to start off. So as you can see, a concept is represented by these uh, major key uh, values. So yeah. it's a concept name, its implementation, explanation, and asset suggestions. So the concept part is just a title. So yeah. to just see the implementation part, it it has three frames. So you have to build three frames. So the first frame is basically uh, saying that is giving you the description of what it is and its duration uh, to which frame it should redirect and the interaction type it's uh, expecting in that frame. Okay, yeah. so the the other frames also respect it's that way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so the next part, the explanation part is just giving you why this concept was generated and like uh, uh, why it aligns to the brand identity and so on and so on. And the uh, last part is asset suggestion. This asset suggestion, like uh, we're providing, I think, five asset suggestions for this part. Yeah. Like each each dictionary is a suggestion of what each frame should look like. So say, for example, for frame one, uh, it's saying you have to create three, three distinctive assets, but where the first one is a background animation, the second one is a tagline, the third one is a counter a countdown timer. So as you can see here, it's saying giving yeah. a, a, an information of what it should look like. So similarly, like for frame what, two, exactly what what I mean then is my question is exactly mm -hmm. what are the others? Are they like asset suggestions, which means variations or what yeah. are they? Yeah, basically they are variations. Okay, good. Just then I think it's correct then the explanation. Yeah. So these are similar except just they are the five samples or whatever samples of suggestions exactly if you implement normally you might implement all of them as a you want to see variations or you said you implement one just to implement one uh so um like we kind of follow a, a, a client request based uh, approach okay. so we kind of give them uh, the assets and then if they select a particular asset, we'll follow that stream and generate those. But we are just collecting all of them and providing it to you. We are currently limited uh, in, in the data that we have. It's just with... Uh, yeah. it's, no, okay, good. So that means... Now. So they should start from here and mm -hmm. go work towards the visual element instead of uh, up to getting here because that one is already done and what is more time better to spend from here taking this as their input because i was asking them to take their input to be uh, briefs and stuff to generate this but your suggestion is that that is probably less relevant and more relevant is to start from here for mm -hmm. the examples that are given mm -hmm. and then from here to generate storyboards exactly yeah okay. good I, I hope that is clear from the discussions earlier that everyone is like the other part you can forget for now, which is, you know, how to generate from brief this, but more take this one as your input now. It simplifies for you the work and translates uh, the visual component of that. Mm -hmm. So if you have any further questions, please. Hello, uh, hi, I have a question. Uh, this is Imtinan. Hi, Maki. I, I want to ask about the other, uh, the archive data and how yeah. it relates to this concept uh, samples. Um, are these are like uh, examples that are, should be like uh, looked at as a, in, for inspiration or something, or is it uh, like, are they connected in a way? Um, so basically like, um, we haven't worked on this data, but we wanted to provide you as much data as possible that we had to start off. Like, we didn't want to like dictate the approach that you follow. So, um, like, maybe as a hint, what you can use that data for? Like I can say it earlier. Um, uh, each folder is a, a different creative, basically uh, a standalone creative. So within each folder you have 
assets. And uh, there are two particular assets that you should uh, look out for, the landing and end frame. So like I said earlier, the landing, uh, the landing and the end frame are basically frames, like frame one and the end frame. If you have, uh, if a creative has, say for example, three frames, landing is the first frame and end frame is the third frame. So those, we are giving image of those, the landing and the end frame. And also additionally, uh, we are providing you assets that are used to build those like the landing frame and the end frame. So what you can do is find like learn a way uh, of positioning. So basically, if you want to train uh, an image image composition uh, model, say for example, you can use that data to train uh, uh, an image composition model. So is that clear? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's clear. Thank you. Great. Go ahead, Mia. Um, am I audible? Okay. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, I have one question. It's not. It's not that much of a hard question, but just to make sure. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna generate like a few um, small kind of images that are used as a concept for further, you know, ad making, right? I mean, it's not like a video or too many sequences of videos that we're gonna generate, right? It's, we're just gonna raise like a little three or maybe ten frames uh, that are going to be used as a concept, right? Yeah, it depends. Um, but you are not expected to generate videos at the moment. So, yeah, as you said, it's just images and text. And, but the frames, they might vary. You might even, uh, like, I, I'm not sure from the concepts, but we have generated, like, sometimes uh, five or seven frames. So, yeah, expect that. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Uh, any questions? Uh, it's better to clear it out here before you start the task. So, any any questions that you have? I have one question. <clears throat> sure, sure. Please go ahead. So, yeah, are there any products that currently uh, actually do what we are we are doing as a task for this week? So, what I mean is, is there any other like or website or a a a project that actually we can like check and see how they do how they did it and maybe follow that? Is there any of that you know? Um, okay, maybe. I'm not sure, but um, uh, I'm pretty sure, like, like I've seen a, a Google advertisement where they build banners for uh, for clients, but I'm not sure where you can find them. I, I, I wanted to include it here for you guys as a resource, but I couldn't find it again. And there are there are surely some uh, progresses in this regards. And I guess if you search around, you'll surely find someone who's doing it. But I think like uh, it's not like more or less uh, dependent. Like I said, from our concept side, they are just starting from uh, provided assets and uh, brief informations. But we are basically classifying what they are doing into multiple steps by which, like, we are generating uh, definitive concepts based on their brand guidelines and so on and so on. Like, not to get into details, and we have a, a very like um, powerful way of generating con uh, uh, advertisement uh, concepts or ideas. So yeah, there are ways, but I don't think they follow this similar step. But 
So I think you can replicate or find out how they do it, starting from uh, uh, assets and so on. Yeah, so, so I was checking around and I found this adcreative.ai, so website, <clears throat> and it, it does create, uh, generates creatives. I think given a text, uh, it kind of generates uh, an image and also generates text as well and headlines. So maybe if you like check that and if it's something that, that what's the end product of our uh, task is supposed to be, maybe like, can you confirm? Sure, I think I've heard of them before. Uh, but I think it's, they're more or less limited. Uh, yeah, I've seen them. And I think, uh, yeah, we have some kind of similarities. And more or less, they create banner ads for different clients. But our, our, our like, if you've seen earlier, our creatives are not um, banners, more or less. Like what Adludio is known for is interactive creatives, or by where like we have multiple frames. Like if you consider a, a single banner as a single frame, we have like within a single cre creative or advertisement, we have multiple banner ads, and so on. So that's what makes us so different and uh, like uh, a niche within the market as well. And uh, yeah, if you think you can replicate that, uh, find a way to use that, sure, go ahead. All right, All right. thank you. <clears throat> okay, Abel, or yeah, Abel. All right, thank you. So uh, my question is, uh, uh, so after doing this uh, creative art in the frames, where will be where we will be implementing this? So is it a web app or is it a social media or something? So what kind of format uh, shall we kind of create so that it can be interactive? So to stimulate the interactive uh, aspect of this project, uh, will we be using a web app or some sort of social media web embedding or something? So I just wanna understand more about that. Um, yeah, the, the next step, like you said, like uh, we are moving one step ahead from the story building part. Like uh, after a we we don't want to present them what the end result should look like. Uh, uh, like we don't want to show them. As we have seen earlier, the lady with the with, with the packets, like different hair coloring and so on, and it being interactive and so on, that's actually like the final build. But at the moment, we don't want to show the client uh, that particular like final output. Like that's the final final. That creative will will be live and uh, posted on different uh, ad advertising platforms and so on. But no. We don't want to show them, and there is no need for uh, web apps and so on. But from a, a representation perspective, like your collection, your your question is correct and legit, and uh, insightful as well. And what I say is, like wherever you go, it's basically uh, advertisements are uh, tied to their ad format, ad format as in their size. So like I described earlier, there are like, we majorly work on two ad formats, which are full screen and MPU mobile uh, based ones, which is 300 by 251. So like if you focus uh, for the two parts, it's enough. And uh, consider the ad format only, the width and height, don't, uh, specifically like uh, think about Facebook uh, uh, or uh, like other uh, uh, available social media out, uh, outlets. It's just what matters is that format and it can be replicated across all social media platforms and even websites as well. So I hope that answers your question, Ali. 
Yes, it kind of does. But uh, to kind of ask you more on that, so uh, you just want the two types of ads of the final output of this specific project. That's what I want to make it clear. Yeah, we, we just need we just need the visual representation on what each frame looks like and how they are interconnected across the board, like showing the user flow. And that's good enough. All right, thank you. Sure. Uh, anyone else? I think I saw someone else. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Abraham asked a question. Yeah. Okay, Abraham, I think. I have a slight confusion regarding the image and, image and text generation. So the, so the text that's going to be generated is going to be part of the image or it's created separately going to be uh, put with the image. So like uh, the text is going to be an independent image. It's generated separately. Uh, but even like when you create a text, if you want a background for it and so on, or if the textual description dictates it to have a background, like you can use that background as well. So it won't be separately a text, but a text having a background as well. So you can take that into consideration as well. And yeah, text should be a separate asset from the image as well. I hope that answers your question. And uh, Teddy, as I've understood the challenge, we're supposed to take the concepts and asset suggestions and generate individual assets and compose them to generate a storyboard. Am I right? Yes, you're correct. And moreover, what model are we supposed to make use of? Can you suggest that? Thanks. Uh, yeah, sure. So in the resources part, especially the like, uh, the you can find a lot of resources on, uh, from what I've shared. Regarding the image generation, we want you to like, uh, use uh, uh, open source models. So stable diffusion is the go-to model and there are different applications by which you can use these uh, open source models. Like we have listed three, Confi UI, uh, Focus, and uh, I think it's what, what 1111? Uh, I, I don't remember well, but there is something called uh, uh, that ends with 1111. And they even have like API endpoints. If you deploy them or find a way to deploy them, there are ways of accessing those uh, applications through an API endpoint, and you can just automate the process of creation, creating this image uh, uh, like uh, automatically using their uh, API endpoints. So that covers the image generation part. For the text generation part, you have to come up with your own way. Uh, there is no need for uh, uh, referring to uh, a model to generate texts. It's very like uh, too uh, straightforward to generate, uh, like using code rather than uh, relying on models. For the image composition part, check out like there is all. There are also startup models, um, like uh, 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 like uh, on the first uh, resource that I linked there. There is an image composition uh, module that you can use, but I don't think it's uh, good enough for this particular task. Uh, and you can check out uh, other like uh, researches and other code bases uh, correlated there. There is a lot of research there. All researches uh, related to image composition are almost available there, so you can go through them. And uh, yeah, you can use model there, or even uh, like a programmatic way, but it should be amazing. And even discussing regarding image composition, like you have to find a way to say, uh, locating or putting the image at this position, uh, uh, like is better. You have to find a way to evaluate that particular uh, like suggestion or the, the position that you are providing. And uh, the last part, it's uh, like you can follow a programmatic approach. Uh, I think 
that's uh, the those suggestions are good enough. Uh, Ikram, please continue. Okay, so like I was, ha I'm having a confusion. Like, how can we uh, mix our frames interact? Like, is this a front end implementation or there is something? Uh, like, um, imagine it from a, a visualization perspective, and there is no like uh, moving parts. Sure, like uh, in if you go like to a GIF part, GIF and so on, you can create like continuously moving uh, image, like uh, image which has animations inside. But just what we want is to create an image which represents the user flow and the produced frames. So like, uh, like if you, if you have uh, any like, uh, experience in regards to uh, software engineering like uh, uh, or database uh, like entity relational diagram and so on so that kind of way of visualization or representation uh, is that okay. clear okay so like we are we are just visualizing that like how while how the first frame can direct to the second frame and then it follows off is that right yeah. Yeah, simplistically, yeah, but you can include additional information as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. No Any other questions? Uh, if there are no other questions from the trainees, um, let me ask a question. I want to um uh, sorry Hello? I didn't get that. Can I can hear you now? Yeah, so uh yeah, okay. Uh, I just want to understand why the image generation is about generating assets instead of generating a whole frame like a as the asset as a component of the frame, right? So why um, do we create the components and then oh, worry about the composition? Mm, yeah, it's, um, it's a good question. So basically, rather, th why not create them as a whole? Like to start off, the first problem is text-based elements. So if you if you have used like uh, generation models. Like they are bad, very bad at generating texts, and you know, like that's the first reason. Second, uh, like if you are generating multiple, uh, giving or providing multiple prompts to the uh, to the models, the like the image they create is like uh, not the way you want it, almost, and you can't actually like evaluate or uh, extract the the particular image that you want, but rather if you dissect each asset and separate them, and uh, like for takers find your own way, and for each asset uh, separate them and generate each uh, image separately, you you increase the quality, the appearance, and the clarity of each uh, image composing that frame. So it's just from a quality perspective and uh, uh, enhancing like the final output. You you can, but it will surely affect the final output. So exactly. I see. So it's like a limitation from the like the diffusion model itself. Like um, they are not good at doing that. That's why we're not we're not generating the whole frame. Yeah, that and also to enhance the quality as well yeah okay okay thank you so all right uh, more questions yeah sure Basile, if i pronounce your name correctly uh, yeah you, you can hear me yeah yeah, yeah please continue uh okay i mean 
I heard your explanation with Yakubal, but I'm I'm still having trouble on understanding like what are we gonna do with the data? Like what would we use it for? What what is it good for? Is it just to look at it or uh, how would you how should we utilize it in the project? Um, yeah, to start, if you look at it, <laughs> but well, <laughs> <That's good. laughs> so as I've explained earlier, what you can do is basically uh, just a simple way of to start with the data is just take the asset suggestions, and for each frame, you have uh, like the category of that asset and what it uh, describes, right? Hmm? Yes, yes. So what you can do is basically use that description, give it to a, a like a, a model, a diffusion model, and get that asset. So you already changed it to an asset. If you implement an, a diffusion model, like if you deploy a diffusion model, you are, you are already converting that textual input into an asset. So as simple as that, you already have a final, like completed the first task. But like to increase the aesthetics and also uh, get a better quality and uh, also help you in the latter latter task like image composition, you have to add like further properties like aspect ratio, width, height, and so on. Like most of the diff uh, diffusion models that I provided you here accept like I think aspect ratio. So if you can add that, if you can like use, say, for example, an, uh, another LLM to improve that uh, textual uh, description of the prompt using the concept as an additional information and the frame representation uh, to change that like prompt and improve it, you can also use that and increase the quality of the image that you're getting it. So, so you start from a basic, a basic transformation from a texture to an uh, asset but through that like through that process you add additional additional like capabilities and optimizations and enhancements and make it better so i hope that clears it out for you yeah yeah i understand thank you uh, okay great okay i'm all i'm my order uh, yeah uh, for the creatives, you showed us or give us an example. They have somehow uh, they involved in videos, so there are some models that can generate uh, small uh, minute videos too. So, are we required to generate images only, or should we consider videos too? No, no. Leave the videos part. It will uh, increase the like task. Uh, it makes it will make it harder. If you can, yeah, like generate uh, image, that's good enough. The videos, most of the time, it will be provided by the client, so it's not that much of a like uh, importance at the moment, and it will make it the task much much harder. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, here it says finally above the JSON file doesn't have asset suggestions. Uh, okay, maybe uh, I'm not sure, but uh, maybe we have missed it. Uh, so, okay, if there is no asset suggestion, then remove that uh, data. Don't use that data. It's just one concept and omit that uh, concept. Uh, 
I think uh, everything is clear now. I hope. <laughs> Okay, so if you, have, if you have no questions, I think uh, that will be all from me, guys. Uh, wishing you all the best and uh, go get it. <laughs> Thank you, Mokke, for this explanation. And uh, yeah, I think um, we can end the session now. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, everyone.